Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and today I will be smoking the Via Castagli Corona Gorda. And this is a beautiful five by five and a half by 46 Corona Gorda coming to us from Castagli Cigars. This is one of my new favorite brands to smoke just in general. I was first introduced to it by one of my local tobacconist shops in Las Vegas with their Daughters of the Wind series, which came out in 2018. The Villa Castagli line came out shortly thereafter at IPCPR, and it was introduced in 2021. The retailers, I believe, got shipped the boxes before the actual convention, but it was announced, released officially at the convention, and I was uh, fortunate enough to be a part of it that year. So. I've had the opportunity to see kind of all of the line extensions come from this brand. And although I was just getting the channel up and going, I met the local rep for the brand and he's been very gracious enough to offer to come onto the channel. So hopefully I'll get Vlad out here onto the show pretty soon. I wanted to pair the Villa Castagli with a Mezcal today because we just did our first Mezcal video and I thought it went quite well, the pairing. And this is their artisanal mezcal, the 1530. It is a beautiful artisanally made mezcal. And there's essentially two different categories. There's artisanal and then there's um, ancestral mezcals. So the two different categories like you would think of Blanco, Repo, and Anejo exist in the mezcal world to describe kind of the production methods. So with artisanal mezcal, you have a little bit more freedom in the way that you produce the mezcal. You can use certain distillation techniques and fermentation techniques that you cannot use when you go to ancestral mezcal. Ancestral mezcal, you have to use usually animal hide or some sort of animal product in order to use as your fermentation vessel. It has to all be done, the entire process, by human hands. There's no, uh, there's no computer automation. You can't use a donkey or a burro in the actual process whatsoever as far as like mashing the agaves. Has to be all done traditional method to hone a wheel, the whole nine. So on the back side of this, it actually gives you some of the production methods. This is the artisanal. So this comes in right around 50 to $65 a bottle, maybe a little bit more. The ancestral, because of all of the intense human labor in it, and the type of maguey, the type of agave species that they use, you are looking at right around $150 to $200 MSRP. So very, very one-off kind of exclusive bottle that I'll probably feature on another show. But for the $50 version, you're getting an ensemble between espadine and tobala, about 80-20. So majority espadine, little bit of tobala as far as the two agaves that are being used in this ensemble. Type of still alambique and then Tahona Iburo. So Tahona with the donkey crushing, very, very traditional methodology there. You're allowed to use animal labor when you're doing the artisanal, not the ancestral. Two distinct differences between those kind of regulated bodies of mezcal production. And the nose on this is like, this is mind blowing to me. This is one of the, the most like floral citrus forward, just beautiful mezcal noses that I've ever had. There's almost no smoke on it whatsoever. You, you have to like basically get past dark cherry, mandarin orange, and like fresh, fresh like jasmine flower blossom before you can even get to the smoke. Ah, yeah. When mezcal is great, mezcal is great, man. Let me tell you. There are so many of them out there. You're, you know, you definitely have to dive into that, into that world if you have not. You, if you appreciate tequila or any kind of agave spirits whatsoever and you're not drinking mezcal, you haven't, uh, you haven't fully lived yet. But Codigo is owned by George Strait, so it does have a celebrity brand and endorsement to it. They have been producing agaves in partnership with the distillery that they co-owned and, and kind of are in partnership with. It is a family-owned distillery. And the actual, the actual logo right here, this cross, is the, the family kind of crest and logo 
for the distillery. So this is all something that uh, remains very, very close with George Strait and his partners in Mexico that are the owners of the distillery. And they own all of their fields. They grow some wild agave for certain mezcal releases. And then they grow, you know, at the actual fields themselves, the Blue Weber that they're using for their standard tequila production. The blend on the Castagli cigar is going to be the Ecuadorian Habano on the wrapper, Ecuadorian Habano on the binder, and then fillers from the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Ecuador, and get this, single Peruvian filler as well. And that's kind of the really cool thing about the Villa Castagli lines. I previously reviewed the Pegasus, which was that really fun flying pig size and shape that's near and dear to the history of Villa Castagli and the Castagli line of cigars. I'll link that video up atop, up atop, up top, so that you, know, you can check that out as well, because it is essentially just the same line, different size, but instead of one Peruvian filler, there's two Peruvian, two Peruvian fillers in that particular stick. So the Villa Castagli line has Peruvian filler in all of the different sizes, but two in the Pegasus, as opposed to the one that's in here. This cigar starts off dry tea, oak, nuttiness, oakiness. It's almost like cashews and oatmeal. Really, really beautiful. Slight hint of anise that kind of morphs its way into mint. And it's even more apparent in the Pegasus line, which was something that I spoke about, that this was one of the very, very few, along with the Placencia Sixtos, that really has that kind of spearmint, winter mint kind of um, transition to it that I really like. I don't know if it's just the Peruvian filler, I don't know if it's the way that it interacts with the rest of them, or just the blend in general, but it's fantastic. Price point on the Villa Castaglis are gonna be $13.50 per stick, 12 per box, so that ends the price point at about $162. We already went over this wonderful Codigo and kind of the price point along that, the flavors of the Codigo. So it's talked about dark cherries, a lot of vanilla, ton of vanilla on this. There's also like this beautiful kind of um, Szechuan kind of pepper that you get from the smoke spice note. And that kind of pepper interacts with both the creaminess on the cigar, but also the earthy kind of tones that are in the stick too like those dried tea leaves. The beauty of this pairing too, this cigar in the final third finishes with a lot of citrus peel. Also some really nice bready kind of espresso notes to them. So the two of them together, they just kind of play off each other. This is, um, for those of you watching Winning Time, this is Magic and Kareem at the height of that season when they're just vibing together the whole entire pairing. And I think that it's one of those pairings out there that most won't, Think about right off the bat, but I think that if you do try something like this out with these flavors, they just all work together in sync and you definitely have a winning time with these two, no pun intended. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below if you found value in this episode. Reach out to me on Instagram, at Master Your Ash, and I will catch you next time for another cigar and mezcal pairing.